prevalence of hypertension is rising in the UK and over a quarter of adults already have hypertension. Hi guys, I am Dr. Asim and I am a volunteer at Flavable. Today I will take you through different stages of hypertension and we will also learn how to treat hypertension in various demographics. We will also walk through a number of clinical scenarios which will definitely boost your confidence in handling cases in your exam. Alright, so let's get started. Because there is something called as white coat hypertension, that is when patients enter clinical setting, their blood pressure climbs about 20 mm of mercury. Therefore, if we just rely on clinic readings, we can misdiagnose a large number of people as having hypertension. This has led to the use of ambulatory blood pressure monitoring, that is your ABPM, or your home blood pressure monitoring, that is HPPM, to confirm the diagnosis of hypertension. And these techniques offer a more accurate assessment. So when we classify hypertension according to clinic reading, we have stage 1 which is 140 over 90 or more to just below 160 over 100. And once the value touches 160 over 100, that is stage 2 hypertension. Now, if the patient has a blood pressure of 180 over 120 or more, that is stage 3 hypertension according to clinic blood pressure reading. Now, as we discussed that ambulatory blood pressure monitoring or home blood pressure monitoring is more important in making the diagnosis of hypertension and is more accurate, so stage 1 according to ABPM or HPPM is anything 135 over 85 or more. And once the ambulatory blood pressure monitor reading touches 150 over 95, that is stage 2 hypertension. So to clarify further, we'll just take an example of a patient who walks into your clinic, you measure his blood pressure and it comes to more than 140 over 90 millimeters of mercury. Now we do not straight away label this patient as hypertensive, but we send this patient back home and we offer them ambulatory blood pressure monitoring or home blood pressure monitoring. Now, ambulatory blood pressure monitoring is a better option than HPPM. Now, if their ABPM comes to comes less than 135 over 85 millimeters of mercury, so we do not label them as hypertensive. But if their ABPM comes more than 135 over 85, then we class them as stage 1 hypertensive. And if their ABPM comes more than 150 over 95, then we class them as stage 2 hypertensive. We treat patients of stage 1 hypertension only if they are less than 80 years of age and have any of the following. Well, if they have target end organ damage, established cardiovascular disease, renal disease, diabetes, or a 10-year cardiovascular risk of 10% or more. But remember that patients who are in stage 2 hypertension, we treat them regardless of their comorbidities or regardless of their age. While deciding the treatment, we have to look at the profile of the patient. So if the patient is less than 55 years of age or has a background of type 2 diabetes, we start them on ACE inhibitors, that is angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors. Now, some patients who are started on ACE inhibitors, they develop dry cough and then they are shifted to angiotensin receptor blockers, drugs like Losartan. Now, if the patient is 55 years of age or above, or patients of Black African or Caribbean origin, they are started on calcium channel blockers. Now, we have to keep in mind that patients who are of Black African or Caribbean ethnicity, they are started on calcium channel blockers regardless of their age. This means that even if they are below 55 years of age, we would still give them calcium channel blockers. If the target of 140 over 90 is not achieved, then we move on to step 2 of treatment. Now, if the patient was initially started on an ACE inhibitor or an angiotensin receptor blocker, then we add a calcium channel blocker or a thiazide-like diuretic. And if the patient was initially started on a calcium channel blocker, then we add an ACE inhibitor or an angiotensin receptor blocker. Now for people of Black African or Caribbean origin who require a second agent, we 
prefer androgen receptor blockers in comparison to ACE inhibitors. If we further need to up titrate the treatment and add a third drug, so if the patient was taking ACE inhibitor and a calcium channel blocker, now we add a thiazide like diuretic. And if the patient was on a ACE inhibitor and a thiazide like diuretic, then we add a calcium channel blocker. So if the patient has to be put on three drugs, so the combination includes an ACE inhibitor, a calcium channel blocker, and a thiazide like diuretic. It is worth to remember that people who are hypertensive as well as type 2 diabetic, we start them on ACE inhibitor regardless of their age. And for people who are hypertensive and diabetic and belong to Black African or Caribbean ethnicity, we also start them on an angiotensin receptor blocker and not a calcium channel blocker. So to get a better grasp of the topic, let's dive into some clinical scenarios and figure out how to manage cases of hypertension. So our first case is a 49-year-old African man who takes a calcium channel blocker for his hypertension. His home blood pressure readings over the past week show an average of 165 over 100 millimeters of mercury. A urine dipstick shows a trace of protein, which is the most appropriate medication to add. So as we can see that the target is not achieved despite being on a calcium channel blocker, so we would jump to second step of the treatment which is adding an angiotensin receptor blocker or an angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitor that is an ACE inhibitor, drugs like losartan or ramipril. So if we talk about the target, so in less than 80 years of age, the target BP is below 140 or 90 millimeters of mercury. And for people who are more than 80 years of age, the target should be less than 150 over 90 millimeters of mercury. So our next case is a 58 year old white English man with a past history of myocardial infarction and type 2 diabetes mellitus has a new diagnosis of hypertension. He is currently taking aspirin, statin and a metformin. What is the single most appropriate medication to be added? Although this guy is more than 55 years of age but we would still put him on an ACE inhibitor as he also has a diagnosis of type 2 diabetes mellitus. And given the benefits of ACE inhibitors in terms of renal protection and retinopathy, it is appropriate to recommend an ACE inhibitor as the first line treatment for hypertension in patients of type 2 diabetes mellitus. So basically, we can say that age, age is uh, not relevant here, and as the patient is diabetic and hypertensive, so we choose an ACE inhibitor. All right, guys, so our last case is a 69-year-old hypertensive white British man who is currently on indapamide, but his blood pressure is still high. He suffers with bilateral ankle edema, which is the single best choice to add in order to control his blood pressure. So as we can see that this patient was started on a thiazide-like diuretic, but his blood pressure is still high, and he also has bilateral ankle edema. So the best choice to add in this case would be an ACE inhibitor, drug like enalapril or ramipril. We cannot really go for a calcium channel blocker here because this patient has bilateral ankle edema and ankle edema is an adverse effect of calcium channel blocker itself. However, ankle edema in this patient could be an evidence of heart failure and probably that was the reason he was started on a thiazide-like diuretic in the first place. And so thiazide-like diuretics are a good choice if there is evidence of heart failure. I hope you guys enjoyed this teaching session with me and would stay tuned to the Plavables YouTube channel for upcoming videos on cardiology. You can also join us on our teaching webinars which are conducted by our team which is Anyone Can Teach and where we try to cover the high yield topics and trust me these sessions are absolutely free. Also guys, please don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Thank you.